This is the third chapter in the electric power distribution course. This chapter will cover the design considerations of primary systems. And this is the first lecture. In this lecture, we will start with an introduction. Then, we will consider the radial type primary feeder. Then, the loop type primary feeder. And finally the primary network. We start with the introduction. Let's start with the introduction. In general, power supply systems and utilization equipment should be designed to be compatible. This requires coordinated efforts and standards that place requirements on voltage ranges supplied by utilities, allowable voltage drops in plant distribution systems, and voltage ranges for utilization equipment. So, Without these requirements, it will be difficult to connect utilization equipment to the power supply systems. This chapter outlines these coordinated efforts and standards associated with assuring good operation of the utilization equipment. In the case of non-existing national or regional adopted standards, international standards can be used. Examples of these standards are those developed and issued by the International Electrotechnical Commission and the IEEE Standards Association. Of course, we should not forget that electric safety rules must be strictly respected. And the standards play a significant role in guiding the designers to develop quite safe designs. The part of the electric utility system that is between the distribution substation and the distribution transformers is called the primary system. It is made of circuits known as primary feeders, or primary distribution feeders. A feeder includes a main, or main feeder, which usually is a three-phase four-wire circuit. Branches or laterals, which usually are single-phase or three-phase circuits, are tapped off the main. Also, sublaterals may be tapped off the laterals, as necessary. In general, laterals and sublaterals, located in residential and rural areas, are single phase, and consist of one phase conductor and the neutral. The majority of the distribution transformers, are single phase, and are connected between the phase and the neutral, through fuse cutouts. The congested and heavy load locations, in metropolitan areas, are served by using underground primary feeders. They are usually radial three conductor cables. The improved appearance and less frequent trouble expectancy are among the advantages of this method. However, it is more expensive and the repair time is longer than the overhead systems. In some cases, cables can be employed as suspended on poles. The cost involved is greater than that of open wire, but safety is better. There are various and yet, interrelated factors, affecting the selection of a primary feeder rating. Examples are The nature of the load connected The load density of the area served The growth rate of the load The need for providing spare capacity for emergency operations The type and cost of circuit construction employed The design and capacity of the substation involved the type of regulating equipment used, the quality of service required, and the continuity of service required. It is worth to mention that the voltage drop in the primary distribution system that extends radially from the substation is function of the load on the feeder. Consequently, light load results in small voltage drop. While, Full load results in large voltage drop. Substations are usually equipped with voltage regulator controls with compensators that raise the voltage as the load increases and lower the voltage as the load decreases to compensate for the voltage drop in the primary distribution system that extends radially from the substation. Distribution transformers with taps and switched or fixed capacitors are usually used to improve the voltage on primary feeders. 
This effectively regulates the voltage at a point of the primary distribution system, located at some distance from the substation. Note that, plants close to the substation, will receive voltages which on the average, will be higher than those received by plants, at a fairer distance from the distribution substation. In this figure, the dashed line in magenta color, shows the regulated voltage with compensation for a light load. With voltage regulation and compensation, it is possible to maintain the voltage close to its nominal value, which makes the voltage deviation nearly equal zero. The voltage conditions on distribution systems, can be improved by using shunt capacitors, that are connected as near the loads as possible, to derive the greatest benefit. The use of shunt capacitors also improves the power factor involved, which in turn, lessens the voltage drops and currents, and therefore losses, in the portions of a distribution system, between the capacitors and the bulk power buses. The capacitor ratings should be selected carefully, to prevent the occurrence of excessive overvoltages, at times of light loads, due to the voltage rise produced by the capacitor currents. The voltage conditions on distribution systems, can also be improved, by using series capacitors. But, the application of series capacitors, does not reduce the currents, and therefore losses in the system. Next, let's see how the design considerations, are applied to some types of distribution systems. The simplest and the lowest cost and therefore the most common form of primary feeder is the radial type primary feeder. So, let's start by studying the design considerations, for the radial type primary feeder. As seen in the previous chapter, and as shown in this figure, the main primary feeder branches into various primary laterals, that in turn separates into several sublaterals, to serve all the distribution transformers. In general, the main feeder and subfeeders are three-phase three or four-wire circuits, and the laterals are three-phase or single-phase circuits. So, it is clear that, the current magnitude, is the greatest in the circuit conductors, that leave the substation, and carry the total load. And the current magnitude continually lessens out, toward the end of the feeder, as laterals, and sublaterals, are tapped off the feeder. Usually, as the current lessens, the size of the feeder conductors is also reduced. However, the permissible voltage regulation, that is equivalent to conductor impedance times current, may restrict any feeder size reduction, which is based only on the thermal capability, Ri square, that is, current carrying capacity of the feeder. So, both cable thermal limit and voltage regulation must be satisfied, when sizing and selecting the proper feeders cables. As mentioned in the previous chapter, the reliability of service continuity of the radial primary feeders, is low. Indeed, a fault occurrence at any location on the radial primary feeder, causes a power outage, for every consumer on the feeder, unless, the fault can be isolated from the source, by a disconnecting device such as a fuse, sectionalizer, disconnect switch, or recloser. In this case, a proper coordination of protective devices responses, is very essential, in order to minimize the number of affected customers. This figure shows, a modified radial type primary feeder, with tie and sectionalizing switches, to provide fast restoration of service to customers, by switching unfaulted sections of the feeder, to an adjacent primary feeder or feeders. So, this configuration is much more reliable than the previous one, because it can provide better continuity of service. The fault can be isolated, by opening the associated disconnecting devices, on each side of the faulted section. This figure shows another type of radial primary feeder, with express feeder and back feed. Note that, each dot represents a load lumped at that location. The section of the feeder between the substation low voltage bus, and the load center of the service area, 
is called an express feeder. No subfeeders or laterals are allowed to be tapped off the express feeder. This figure shows a radial type phase area feeder arrangement, in which, each phase of the three phase feeder serves its own service area. Phase A serves the upper load area, shown with blue color. Phase B serves the medium load area, shown with green color, and Phase C serves the bottom load area, shown with orange color. To increase the reliability of the distribution system, other types than the radial type can be used. For instance, the loop type primary feeder is more reliable than the previous radial types. This figure shows, a loop type primary feeder, that loops through the feeder load area, and returns back to the bus. Sometimes, the loop tie disconnect switch is replaced by, a loop tie breaker, due to the load conditions. In either case, the loop can function with the tie disconnect switches or breakers, normally open, designated by NO, or normally closed, designated by NC. Usually, the size of the feeder conductor is kept the same throughout the loop, because it may carry its normal load, plus the load of the other half of the loop. This arrangement provides, two parallel paths from the substation to the load, when the loop is operated with NO tie breakers, or disconnect switches. A primary fault causes the feeder breaker to be open, and the breaker will remain open, until the fault is isolated from both directions. The loop type primary feeder arrangement is especially beneficial, to provide service for loads, where high service reliability is important. In general, a separate feeder breaker on each end of the loop is preferred, despite the cost involved. The parallel feeder paths can also be connected to separate bus sections in the substation, and supplied from separate transformers. These are some possibilities of increasing the reliability of the loop system. Finally, let's consider the case of a primary network. As shown in this figure, a primary network is a system of interconnected feeders, supplied by a number of substations. The radial primary feeders can be tapped off, the interconnecting, tie feeders. They can also be served directly from the substations. Each tie feeder, has two associated circuit breakers at each end, in order to have less load interrupted, due to a tie feeder fault. Therefore, the primary network system, can supply a load, from several directions. Proper location of transformers to heavy load centers, and regulation of the feeders at the substation buses, provide for adequate voltage at utilization points. In general, the losses in a primary network, are lower than those in a comparable radial system, due to load division. Besides, the reliability and the quality of service of the primary network arrangement, are much higher than the radial, and loop arrangements. However, it is much more difficult to design and operate, than the radial or loop systems. This is the end of this lecture. I hope that it was clear and informative. Thank you for watching.